This video obtained by Reuters shows the aftermath of an Israeli airstrike outside a Gaza City hospital on Friday. But his comments Friday, the U.S., like Israel, does not support the ceasefire. But the Biden administration does support a limited pause to the fighting in some areas and has been increasingly lobbying for humanitarian efforts. The White House is also reporting that about 100 American citizens had left Gaza on Thursday. Blinken, who is visiting Israel today, we had a chance to meet two weeks ago when you came with President Biden, and I asked you back then to do everything in your capacity to bring back our people from Gaza, the women and the children, the husbands and the fathers, all of them. And you looked me in the eye and you said, we're working on it. And we ask you to continue working on it and using every diplomatic tool in your disposal to make it happen. We remember that uh, John McCain, an American hero, survived five years in the Vietnamese prison. We are not going to wait five years. We cannot wait five years. We need them home now. Please do everything you can to help us. And the people of Israel will support hard decisions for this. We've been clear that as Israel conducts its campaign to defeat Hamas, how it does so matters. It matters because it's the right and lawful thing to do. It matters because failure to do so plays into the hands of Hamas and other terror groups. There will be no partners for peace if they're consumed by humanitarian catastrophe and alienated by any perceived indifference to their plight. President Biden has consistently stressed the need for Israel to operate according to international humanitarian law. I also emphasize that the protection of civilians must take place not just in Gaza, but also in the West Bank, where incitement and extremist violence against Palestinians must be stopped and perpetrators held accountable. We believe that each of these efforts would be facilitated by humanitarian pauses, by arrangements on the ground that increase security for civilians and permit the more effective and sustained delivery of humanitarian assistance. A number of legitimate questions were raised uh, in our discussions today, including how to use any period of pause to maximize the flow of humanitarian assistance, how to connect a pause to the release of hostages, how to ensure that Hamas doesn't use these pauses or arrangements to its own advantage. These are issues that we need to tackle urgently, and we believe they can be solved. We are absolutely focused on getting hostages back and getting them back to their families in safety. And we believe that, among other things, uh, a humanitarian pause could uh, help that effort, uh, could facilitate it. It's one of the reasons why uh, we're focused on it. Uh, but regardless, our determination uh, to get, uh, get people back um, is manifested every single day in our efforts to, to do uh, to do just that. And as I said, and said repeatedly, and as President Biden has said, and said repeatedly, we stand strongly with and behind Israel in its right and obligation to defend itself, defend its people, and take the steps necessary to try to ensure that this never happens again. Uh, nothing, nothing has changed, and that won't change. The United States continues to believe that the best 
viable path, indeed the only path, is through a two-state solution. That's the only guarantor of a secure Jewish and democratic Israel, the only guarantor of Palestinians realizing their legitimate right to live in a state of their own, enjoying equal measures of security, freedom, opportunity, and dignity. The only way to end a cycle of violence once and for all. And it's precisely now, in the darkest moments, that we have to fight hardest to preserve a path of stability, of security, of opportunity, of integration, of prosperity, and of peace. Not tomorrow, not after the war, but today. We have been very clear from the outset that we are determined that there not be a second or third front opened in this conflict. Um, President Biden said on day one to anyone thinking of opening a, a second front, taking advantage of the situation, don't. And we backed up those words, uh, not only with work that we've done with many partners in the region to reinforce that message, but with practical deeds, including the deployment of uh, two aircraft carriers, uh, battle groups uh, to the region, uh, including with action that we've uh, taken, for example, against uh, missiles coming from Yemen in the direction of Israel, shooting them down, uh, including as well uh, with strikes that we took in response to multiple attacks on our personnel in Iraq and Syria who were there, as I said earlier, to try to prevent a resurgence in the region of, of ISIL, of Daesh. Uh, we remain absolutely determined uh, in that effort, and um, I'm not going to get into hypothetical situations, but all I can say is uh, we're committed to deterring aggression from any part, um, and we'll take steps necessary to deal with it. Look, I don't want to speak for the Israeli government. It's not appropriate, but I think it's fair to say that what, what I heard today was a, a clear commitment from the government uh, to, to deal with extremist violence in the West Bank. Uh, to condemn it, to take action to prevent it, uh, to take action uh, against those who perpetrate it. So this is important, and we will be uh, looking uh, closely to ensure that um, our, our friends make good on that commitment.